There is a topic in theoretical physics that is uh, about 40 years old. It's called supersymmetry. I wrote the first PhD thesis on the topic at MIT in 1977. I was the only person in the entire institution who thought this particular story was somehow very important. Because when I read these equations, I understood that they implied that there were more forms of matter and energy than anyone had ever taught me in a class. And I thought, you know, if there's a, shot, a chance that that's actually true, that's gonna be enormously important for the future. And so we, for the last decade or so, have been pulling back the cover on the first layer of equations, getting to this hidden layer. And what we have found there is rather quite remarkable. First of all, it turns out that they can be represented in terms of pictures. With these pictures, it turns out, we have begun a very, very fruitful conversation with, with mathematicians because the pictures contain such a depth of information that I can actually put them in front of a mathematician's eye and say, what is this thing? And then they'll start to tell me what they see. And one of the strange discoveries that's come out of this process is that these pictures can contain what are called error correcting codes. In nature, do we see signs of error correcting codes? And I've searched in a number of disciplines, and the only discipline where I have seen a discussion of error correcting codes is actually in genomics. That's the only piece of natural science where I've seen these things. And so it may well be that in some sense, we're seeing evidence of a kind of evolution at work in the fundamental laws of our universe, because that's the only other example I know in nature where error correcting codes are deb debated.